All right, today we're going to be taking a look at 2 Samuel. Hallelujah. You know, um, Yah had gave me this uh, this lesson, actually, when we were actually studying 2 Samuel. And because of time restraints, I couldn't exhaust it. And, um, and so... And I think I even got it a little mixed up, so I wanted to redo it. And so here we go. So we're going to take a look at 2 Samuel, and we're going to be dealing with chapters 11 and 12. Very, very popular Just a couple of chapters concerning the life of uh, David. But we're going to be taking a look at the hidden message within. You know, so that's what we want to concentrate our efforts on uh, this, today is the hidden message within the message. All right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, started off with 2 Samuel 11, 1 and 2. And it reads, it says, It came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time when the kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David tarried still at Jerusalem. So the spiritual picture here is that David is at Jerusalem, you know, and uh, the rest of, the rest of uh, uh, his camp, you know, are fighting a war. You know, and it says it came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Now, what I want to kind of point out today is that much of this is symbolic and even revelatory of what would happen, you know, during the time of Yahushua. But I need you to understand that, yes, even though David, you know, typically speaks to being a type of Yahshua, in this passage, he does not because he's acting as a sinner. And we know that the Messiah was without sin. I mean, you know, so within this passage, presenting him as, as a sinner or uh is speaking about the house of David in which and how they would be used by the enemy in all actuality. So with that in mind, you know, it tells us that he was looking upon a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And no, I just said that. You know, so what I want to present you uh, with now is with the Israel of Yahushua's time, who was the daughter of the oath, you know, and that is the daughter of the original Israel that made an oath with Yah in Sinai, you know, and um, this, this paragraph is a little out of place, but, you know, the woman that he's looking at is Bathsheba, and her name means the daughter of the oath. You know, and so what I want to do is get you to consider that the daughter of the original Israel was upon the earth during the time of our Messiah. You know, the original Israel that made the oath of Yah in Sinai. You know, and I want you to also take note that she's bathing when the house of David saw her. So if we look at Matthew Yahu 3, 4 through 6, we can see, you know, the spiritual Bathsheba bathing. It says in the same Yochanan had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out unto him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. You know, and this is just a spiritual picture of Israel actually bathing. She's becoming clean, cleansed from or filth, which is sin. When you consider 
the original Israel and the covenant that they made, you see how this applies, because it's, it's found in Deuteronomy 29, 14, and 15, and it says, Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with them that standeth here with us today before Yahuwah our Elohim, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Speaking of the generations to come, amen? Yes. So, 2 Samuel 11, 3, David sent and inquired after the woman and said, Is not this Bathsheba? And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah? You know, and... Okay, so we see Bathsheba means daughter of the oath, Eliam, Elohim's people, Uriah, light of Yah, Hittite, terror or fear. So what we have here is a spiritual picture of the daughter of the oath, the oath that was, that, that was made in Deuteronomy 29, 14, and 15. We had a daughter of the oath, Eliam, Elohim's people. So can you see that? Mm. You know, this was this oath was and this covenant was made with Elohim's people, Israel. And during the time of our Messiah, we took dealing with the daughter of the oath, Elohim's people. Okay? And the daughter, uh, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Uriah, you know, um names means light of Yah. And I didn't put it up there because I I believe I like to think that everybody have heard of the passage where Yahushua says, I am the light, yes. you know, so, and he's the only one uh, that's referred to by the light, besides those that come after him, you know, but Uriah, his name means light of Yah, and so we see a spiritual picture here of Israel, um, Bathsheba, the cleansed, the one that was cleansed, you know, being the wife of Yah, you know, and him being a Hittite is just speaking to the reverence and the, the fear, you know, because he was, of course, Elohim and the son of Elohim. Okay, so let me have my first reader read Yochanan 3, 25 through 29, which uh, validates this concept. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond the Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This was my joy before is fulfilled. Hallelujah. So hereby we learn that Bathsheba, the daughter of the oath, was the wife of Uriah, the light of Yah. Hence, we can conclude that Bathsheba represents the ecclesia, which um, came out of Israel and uh, cleansed herself. You know, and Uriah represents Yahushua, who is the light. You know, and so we can see here that he truly did. Uh, that uh, Yochanan the Immerser or John the Baptist, if you prefer, truly was uh, bearing witness that he was the one with the bride, you know, and that our Messiah was the bridegroom, you know. And they were asking him, you know, and he was telling them, hey, I told you I, I wasn't the one, you know. He that have the bride is the bridegroom. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. All right, so. 2 Samuel 11, 4 and 5 says, And David sent messengers and took her, and she came unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David, and said, I am with child. See, now he knew she was married, but okay, but we're not getting into that. All right, so said, 
And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her. You know, and the woman conceived. So, I need you to remember that sinful David represents the enemy. So this is a spiritual pick of what the enemy would do. And we see, if we go to Yahshua's, uh, the account of Yahshua's life, we see in Luke 22, 3 through 5, we see the enemy sending messengers and taking the bride and going into her and laying with her, spiritually speaking, of course. Um, Luke 22, 3 through 5, um, my next reader, please. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Ascarius, being of the number of the twelve. And he went his way and communed with the chief, with the chief priests and captains, how he m might betray him unto them. And they were glad and converted to, uh, to give him money. Okay, so here it is. We see that um, Judas Iscariot, he was one of the twelve, representing he was part of the bride. You know, and it says that Satan, that he went into Judas. And here it is. He, it says he covenanted with him to give him money. So if we look at this word covenanted, we see that it's soon, you know, comes from, it's a compound word made of two Greek words. Um, from the Greek word soon, number 4862, denoting union. Uh, with or together, and also the Greek word "thethe," number 5087, meaning to, uh, which mean, it can mean to conceive. That's not the only way it's interpreted, but one of the ways it's interpreted is to conceive. You know, so um, what I'm trying to point out here is, you know, you can see a spiritual picture of him going into the bride and the bride conceiving. You know, and what they conceived, you know, would, would actually be accursed, you know, because what they conceived, you know, um, brought, uh, was, was out of sin. You know, just like what was conceived with Bathsheba and, and David in the original story was conceived out of sin. So, same thing. You know, Luke 22, 6 says, and he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude, you know, and so uh, that's what was conceived. Sin was conceived out of that union, you know, um, not good. So I pray you're starting to see how David's life actually set the stage for what would happen with Yahushua, for like father, like son, you know, and so when Yahushua would have been upon the earth, this is one of the ways that he would have known what was to be of him. One of the ways he would have known what was going to happen. You know, Yah has not left us in the dark. In the same way that he knew, it's the same way that we can know, which is by understanding scripture. You know, and when, when you do, then, you know, it becomes like reading tomorrow's newspaper. And you'd be able to know what's going to happen even before it happens. You know, so we have Bathsheba, Representing the ecclesia of Israel. You know, and this is, um, I was almost with Kirk. This is Isaiah 54, uh, 5. <laughs> you know, it's, it's for your maker is your husband. Yahuwah Zavuot is his name. You know, and for those of us who make up the ecclesia of Israel, you know, you know, Yah is our husband. And your redeemer is the holy one of Israel. He is called the Elohim of the whole earth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's um, one of the things we want to keep in mind. Let me have my next reader read 2 Samuel 11, 6 through 13. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, 
right. Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thy, thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open field. Shall I then go into, into my house to eat and drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do, do this thing. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, and he had made him drunk. And at even, and at even he went out to lie in his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. Hallelujah. So we see how righteous Uriah was, you know, how he refused to, to do such a thing, you know, um, while the ark and, and everyone else was in the fields and fighting the war, you know, for him to go, go down and, um, and be with his wife, he, he, he felt it was an abomination. It was something that was abominable. And he said, you know, he would not do it, absolutely would not do it. And he didn't do it. You know, but this also reminds me of something that happened, happened with the Messiah. You know, in Luke 7, 36, you know, um, you can see a bit of a parallel for it. It speaks about, you know, when David called him and he did eat and drink before him and made him drunk, you know, and, uh, and, and just, you know, invited him to eat because he was plotting, um, actually, uh, um, end up plotting against them out of that, you know. So we see in Luke 7, 36 through 39, the Messiah also going to the enemy, one of the um, Pharisees, you know, and it says, and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, she knew that Yahushua sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet, behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. You know, and I just thought this was just so, so, uh, uh, parallel, so much parallel, you know, when David had called Uriah, you know, and he told, told Uriah, you know, to go and wash, um, go to thy house and wash thy feet. And here it is, we see the Messiah eating with, with the enemy, even as Uriah was eating with his enemy, you know, and his feet's getting washed. You know, and verse 39 said, And now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake with him, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would he have, uh, would he have known who and what manner of woman this is that touches him? She is a sinner. You know, and so we can see that he already had preconceived notions. He already was judging, you know, and was doing so incorrectly. I mean, I'm going to next read to read 2 Samuel 11, 14 and 15, please. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it, sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah to the forefront of, forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. Okay, so here it is. We see simply a picture of the house of da um, David, you know, those who were ruling over Jerusalem, sending, sending to the other, the other, uh, Uriah to his, to the other one that was in charge in Jerusalem, you know, um, uh, even Joab, who was captain of the guard, you know, here it is, we see uh, David sending Uriah and Joab, Uriah to Joab to be killed, 
sending him to his death, in other words. You know, so, um, and even had him, you know, carry the letter himself, you know, that he may be smitten and die. So it was just a spiritual picture of him sending sending him to his to his death to uh, to another another one of his cronies um, actually to die. You know, and keep in mind that these people was people that Uriah knew. He knew Dabi personally. He knew Yoel. You know, just like with the Messiah. These were supposed to be his brethren. You know, they were all Yahudim. You know, so, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, very, very evident that, you know, that there's a, a whole lot here that meets the eye, you know. Um, it's just uh, horrible to think, you know, but we need to understand this because it's going to be like the same way in the end times. Mm. You know, if, we, if we're uh, around, then we need to know how the setting is going to be, amen? Mm -hmm. You know, so Luke 23 and 6, you know, speaks to, speaks to this. It says, when Pilate heard, got, uh, heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was at Jerusalem at that time. And so again, here it is. We see the same thing, you know, um, the house of David sending, sending them, uh, the Messiah even to his death, you know. And of course, we know Herod isn't going to say anything different, you know, but send him, you know, to, to his death over to Pilate. All right, let me have my next reader read Second Samuel eleven twenty three and twenty four, and drop down to Second Samuel eleven twenty six, please. And. And the messenger said unto David, Surely the men prevailed against us, and came out unto us and into the field. And we were upon them even unto the entering of the gate. And the shooter was shot from off the wall upon their servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and their servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. And when the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. Thank you. Yes, so here it is. We see that uh, David get, sends Uriah to his death, even as um, the house of David sent Yahushua, who, who, also, who, named, who was the light, even as Uriah's name means the light of Yah. We see the light of Yah being sent unto his death as well. You know, um, and says the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, and she mourned for her husband. And if we look in the Brit Kadashah, we see them mourning for Yahushua. They mourn for their husband. You know, Mark 16, 9 and 10, and Luke 24, 17 through 19. Um, uh, my next reader, please. Now, now when Yahushua was risen to earth, Early the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told him that he had been with her and was in where he went. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before Elohim and all the people. Hallelujah. Okay, so here it is. We see that the bride truly was mourning for for the Messiah uh, after he passed for the light of Yah, you know, after he, after he was um, crucified, you know, even as the wife of Uriah had mourned for her husband. And 2 Samuel eleven twenty seven 27 says, And when the morning was passed, Dabi sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife. How about that? Hmm. That's, 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 that's pretty, yeah. That's not good, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, and said she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased Yahuwah. 
I just I know it did. You know, so see the spiritual picture this um Acts one, four and five says, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. And speaking this is the Messiah speaking to the um his his bride speaking to Bathsheba in the scheme of things, it says, But wait for the promise of the Father which saith he ye have heard of me, for a yoke and I am truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with Ruach HaKodesh not many days hence. You know, and then we have Acts 8, 1. It says, and Saul, or Saul, was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the ecclesia. Now this per persecution uh, was, uh, well anyway, uh, which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So we see the apostles, they were to stay at Jerusalem and even after they uh, um, gave birth, so to speak, they still were at Jerusalem with the rulers of uh, the house of David, you know, that was ruling over Jerusalem because they were married to him. So they had to stay there. Acts 15, 1 and 2, you know, and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moshe, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Uh, actually, uh, I think I got one of my slides out of place. Uh, Continue. You know, Galatians 2, 4 through 6, and Jude 1, 3, and 4. My next reader, please. And what because of false brethren, unawares, brought in, who came in for privilege to spy out our liberty, which we had in the sky of the that they might bring us into bondage. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these who seemed to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it made it no more matter to me. I won't be in acceptance of no man's person, for they who seemed to be somewhat in confidence added nothing to me. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men have been unawares who were before of their ordained. Okay, so what we're taking a look at is when the morning was passed and David sent and fetched her to his house and she became his wife. So we have Acts 1, 4, and 5, you know, that speaks to them actually being at Jerusalem, you know, um, and how even when everyone left, the apostles still stayed at Jerusalem because they were married to the house of David that was ruling at Jerusalem. So they were commanded of Yah to stay there, and so they did. You know, and so this is just a spiritual picture of Bathsheba, you know, uh, being married to the house of David. And then we have in Acts 15, which after the mourning, speaks, uh, uh, after they mourned the death of the Messiah, speaks of certain men which came down from Judea, you know, and began to teach things that wasn't right. You know, and so this is uh, just a spiritual picture of of um again the ecclesia being married to the house of david you here it is we see uh, many of them actually became a part of them, you know and, and was speaking about since they was <coughs> something incorrect 
they wanted to get to the bottom of it, so they were like, okay, well, we're going to go to the pillars of the faith, which is in Jerusalem where the ecclesia was. You know, now this is the same thing that Paul speaks about in Galatians 2. Very same, very same thing. You know, um, these false brethren that were brought in unawares. You know, this is the house of David, the wicked house of David that took Bathsheba, you know, and, and uh, made her his, his bride after killing the light of Yah. And so we see them actually um, brought in and the uh, the reason for is that they wanted to bring him into bondage, you know, even as, you know, when Bathsheba was brought unto, unto David in the house of David, she became his wife, she was in subjection to him. This is the same thing that these false brethren came into the ecclesia to do, to make them be in subjection unto them, you know. And this is the problem that Apostle Paul had with them in Jerusalem, you know. It's like, you know, and he said it seemed like they were in somewhat in conference, like, you know, they were together, you know. Um, but he says, you know, whatever the case, it didn't make no difference to him because he didn't give them any, pay him nothing but no attention, you know. And so Jude also speaks about the same thing, these men, these these Yahudim that crept into the ecclesia, you know, and took over the ecclesia, you know, and so much so that he said that Jude was warning that it was needful for him to write to exhort to you that, um, that ye should earnestly contend. You had to fight for the original faith that was once delivered unto the saints. See, and this is why, this is where we at today. Again, we have to fight, you know, for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints because it's just, it done got so, so discombobulated, so mixed up, you know, that, you know, folks don't know which way is up. So, 2 Samuel eleven twenty seven also said, and she bare a son. You know, it says, when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare a son. You know, so, I want to um, call your attention to Yochanan 16, 19 through 22 to let you know that not only was the ecclesia type of bride for a Messiah, but he also spoke of them bearing a son, you know, giving birth. Yochanan 16, 19 through 22. Now Yahushua knew that they were desirous to ask him and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves that I said a little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye know, therefore, and ye now, therefore, have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. So hereby we learn that, spiritually speaking, Yahushua's disciples, um, his ecclesia, were in fact pregnant before he died. And he was prophesying of their giving birth to a son. You know, and so it's the same thing like we've seen with Bathsheba. You know, she had conceived, and this is part of the reason that brought about the death of Uriah. So, take a look at the ecclesia actually giving birth. Acts 2, 1 and 2, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing wind, mighty, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And Acts 2, 41, then they gladly received his word and were baptized in the same they were added unto them about 3,000. You know, so here it is. We see that the uh, Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, came upon them, you know, and that same day were added 3,000. And then the next day, um, it speaks of, it says, and as they spake unto, this is Acts 4, 1 through 4, and as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Yahushua the resurrection from the dead. 
And they laid hands on them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now evening tide. Howbeit, many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men, of the men were about 5,000. Mm. Okay? And so, if you put 5 and 3 together, you get 8,000. 8 is the number of new birth. Mm. You know, and you see also that right after this, it speaks of no one else joining, um, no one else joining uh, the ecclesia. You know, and so, this is a spiritual picture of that son being born. Now, so, 2 Samuel eleven twenty seven, again, it says, And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house. And we, we, look at, we looked at the spiritual significance of that. And it says she became his wife. We looked at the spiritual significance of that. And bare him a son. We've seen the spiritual significance of that. And lastly, it says, but the thing that David had done displeased Yahuwah. He was not happy about that, mm. about none of that goings on. You know, and so let's take a look at the spiritual significance of that. You know, um, if we continue on, uh, 2 Samuel 12, 1 tells us, it says, and Yahuwah sent Nathan unto David. You know, because he didn't like what happened. So he sent Nathan unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the rich, um, the one rich and the other poor. Now Nathan, his name means a giver. Hmm. Now in Nathan we have a giver with the gifts of Elohim. You know, and so Nathan was a, uh, was a giver and he had the gift of Elohim, which was the... Uh, the chief gift, which was the gift of prophecy. Now, if we look at the spiritual significance of this in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, we see that another was given the gift of Elohim. Let me have my next reader read 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11, please. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Lord. And there are differences of, of administrations, but the same out of nine. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same Elohim which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the rock is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the rock the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same rock, to another faith by the same rock, to another the gifts of healing by the same rock, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and self same Ruach dividing to every man severally as he will. Okay, hallelujah. So here it is. We see that we have our own spiritual um, Nathan, which is the Holy Spirit himself. Who gives the gifts of Elohim unto uh, whomsoever he chooses. Now, I should have had the uh, passage up here where um, there's a few passages where you see that the Ruach HaKodesh is telling the disciples, like um, Paul in particular, I know he, he speaks of the persecution that he must endure. You know, and, you know, this is what the uh, Ruach HaKodesh led them into, you know, even with giving them the gifts. You know, there was some suffering that came along with it, even unto the death, in all actuality. You know, and so we're going to see that Nathan is about to give David pretty much the, uh, or something very similar. Let's take a look. Okay, um, let me have my next reader read. 2 Samuel 12, 2 through 9. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and, and with his children. It did eat of his own meat, and drank of his own cup, and lay in his bosom, and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock, and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, 
but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said unto Nathan, As you who will live it, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said unto David, Thou art the man. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house, and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Therefore, wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of Yahuwah to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Hallelujah. So here it is. We see, you know, Nathan is, is telling them what's going, what's, what's going on. He tells them this story about a traveler coming. Traveler represents Satan. He was the way, he's the wayfaring guy. He's the one that goes to and fro, up and down, um, within the <coughs> earth, as a lion seeking who he, who he, whom he may devour. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and says that, you know, instead of giving them one of his own to devour, he, uh, David, took the poor man's lamb, mm -hmm. dressed it for the man that was coming to him. You know. And so Yah is getting on him and he's telling him, look, you know, I, I made you ruler over my people, delivered you out of the hand of Saul, and would have done, you know, even more things. But here it is, you know, went and killed the light of Yah, Uriah, and with the sword, and has taken his wife to be thy wife, and has slain him with the sword of the children of Amnon. And, you know, this is just how the Messiah was um, was killed. You know, they didn't kill him directly themselves. They had Pilate do it. You know, so, you know, a type of the enemy just as Ammon, Ammon was. So you see the parallel is, is, is really there. It's all the way through. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 2 Samuel 12, 10, 11. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. Because thou hast despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith Yahuwah, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Mm. You know, and so he says... Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. And this is why the Messiah, why he taught, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against, against his father and the daughter against his, her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. See, he was able to say this because he knew that he was as Uriah the Hittite and because of his death, the house of David would be parted. Because of his death, wickedness would, uh, would arise up in there and the enemies would be them of their own household. Mm -hmm. And so he understood this and this is how he was able to forewarn his bride, the ecclesia, of what would um, come to pass. <clears throat> Well, one of the ways anyway, mm -hmm. you know, and again, verse 11 said, and I will take thy wives from thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. Now, he already said that is that um, he will uh, raise up evil out of his own house. And so this came to pass in Second Samuel 16, 22 says, so they spread Absalom a tent. Upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in unto his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Mm -hmm. So you see, y'all brought his prophecy to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, and verses 13 and 14 of 2 Samuel says, And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. And Nathan said unto David, Yahuwah also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Mm -hmm. How be it? Because by this deed, 
thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of Yahuwah to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. You know, and so you see, Yah, he didn't take David's life. He spared his life. But he said, the child that is born, he shall surely die because he's a product of sin. You know, 2 Samuel 12, 13. You know, and David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against Yahuwah. And Nathan said unto David, Yahuwah also have put away thy sin. You know, now, 2 Samuel 12, 5, you know, tells us what David's words were when he was passing judgment upon um, this, whoever this person was before he knew it was himself. <laughs> and what he said it says, and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, as Yahuwah liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. Now, Yah was gracious enough that he didn't allow him to die. Mm. You know, um, you know, but verse 14 it says, how be it by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies. Of Yahuwah the blasphemy, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So the son has to die. You know, that, that um, well, the child that was born, that firstborn of Bathsheba has to die. You know, and 2 Samuel 12, 18 uh, teaches us that that prophecy came to pass. It says, and it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him. That the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will we then vex him? How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? You know, but they little did they know he already knew the child was gonna die, because Yah had already forewarned him. You know, see, but the thing is, is you know, for one, I want you to understand, I want you to see the times, the time uh, span, you know, from the time that David done the act until the time that the punishment was carried forth was a great deal of time that had trans that had went 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 across because here it is we see that she were already done gave birth so we know that that was nine months right there because mm -hmm. it takes nine months to have a baby right mm -hmm. you know so we see that it was at least nine months before Yah brought brought his punishment, his discipline upon upon David. You know, and so that's something to think about, you know, because he doesn't, you know, his 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 sense of time is way different than ours. Yeah. You know, a day is as a thousand years. And so here it is, we see the child did die though on the seventh day. Then we have Second Samuel twelve sixteen it says and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing. Now this is this is again, this is uh, King David, you know, passing judgment, you know, when he was upset, not knowing that the guy was himself. So he was saying that the guy should surely die and he shall restore the lamb fourfold but he didn't know it was going to be him because he did this thing, you know. Now Yah did spare the life of David, but he did make him repay fourfold. Mm -hmm. And the first was with the child, you know, and so a life for a life. So with the child, you know, that was one. You know, that's 2 Samuel 12, 18 we just read. But also 2 Samuel 13, 33 says, Now therefore let not my, my, my Lord the King take the thing to, to his heart to think that all his king's sons are dead for... Amnon only is dead. That's two. And we have 2 Samuel 18, 15. And the ten young men that bear Yoab's armor compassed about and smote Absalom and slew him. That's three. And then the most famous son of David of them all, Matthew Yahoo 27, 50, Yahushua, mm -hmm. the son of David, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. That's four. So he did have to pay fourfold. That's all I have for you. Prayer was a blessing.